Well, the other TLB is dead in the water. That one's dead? Yeah. It's not plugged in? No, it's plugged in, but the battery's dead. You're not gonna be very tight because you're are you all the way in? You're not all the way in yet. Is that what she said? Yes, we have just one joke in our company and we use it over and over and over again. There's nothing like recycling. Alright, we got it, we gotta marry up tight. Tim wants you to go in further to uh Blaine. Now when you're plowing snow, you're going to end up working day and night and sometimes day again. What I mean is there's no brakes when you're a snow plower. You can't stop until the system leaves the area and you get all of your lots perfectly clean. Alright guys, we're touring everything that we snow plow here, so everything that you see is part of our account. Uh, this is 1.6 million square feet that we cover, which somebody count that out to be like 32 acres. All right now guys, I plow this 1.6 million square feet as a subcontractor, and I plow an additional 500 to 600,000 square feet as a contractor or so which I thought was pretty cool, uh, you know, kind of way of phrasing it. Um, makes it just seem pretty massive. And then I realized growing up on a farm that if my dad heard 32 acres, he'd be like, that's nothing. He was a crop duster, so he'd go out and spray 400 acre fields. So 32 acres doesn't seem like much. So all of the snow inside. Okay, so one of the things, Elliot, when you scrape like that, you're not getting any more down pressure than if you scrape at a lesser angle. But what can happen is you going forward, if you hit something, you can bend, slightly bend, the hydraulic arms, the hydraulic cylinders, and then you'll get a weird leak out of them, okay? All you gotta do is have just the slightest bit. It doesn't improve anything. Now if you hit something, you're less likely to bend those cylinders. You don't know what you don't know. Now as a subcontractor, I get paid by the hour, but I also have accounts set up under my own contracts that pay me no matter what. That means guys, if I don't even go out and snow plow at all, I still get paid for the entire winter. It's not as much as if I was working, but it covers all of my equipment expenses. I get paid if it doesn't snow, but I get paid even more if it does. Now, if you guys wanna learn how to set up your own accounts to protect yourself and your business over the winter, no matter what happens, whether it snows a ton or it doesn't snow at all, go over to Dirt Monkey University because the good news is, is right now we are putting on an intensive training seminar on how to optimize your snow plowing. But it goes further than that. We're also going to be dovetailing that into an entire bidding and estimating series and wrapping that up with what we call the Big Boss Workbook. None of this is available anywhere else but at Dirt Monkey University. The winter time is when you guys should be shoving your heads full of information, not playing the Xbox. Now check this out. This thing is freaking massive. The amount of snow this uh, Quattro Plow handles is insane. Look at him. He's going, he's articulating around the corners. What a hot shot. Actually, I love it. So all of the snow inside of here has to get pulled out, and then we have to push it all the way down to over here. Um, so we just toured one building. Now the other building, let's see, the, the backhoe may be coming 
by here pretty quick. Gotta look for cars. That goes over there. So all the snow in this lot goes up here. Here's the next building. Right here, this tour is gonna take a while. I may have to I may have to shut you guys off because it's a long tour. Um, we're gonna go see how the coffee shop boys are doing. We gotta work our way around. This is all part of what we plow here. snow that way that's good dialysis is cleared that's good well, shovelers have not showed up yet shovelers got a big job out here they use a four-wheeler I am yes I am going down the do not enter way but that's one of the the few perks of driving a snow plow truck is you get to go where other people don't All right, guys, we're going to break in here for some quick V-plow action. As you see the snow coming by, what I want you to look at is I'm showing you guys how you can angle each blade to capture the snow. On the next pass, watch as I have a big pile of snow coming right at us. And at the last minute, instead of it knocking the camera down, what I do is I grab that driver's side blade and I flip it to push the snow to my passenger side to avoid the camera. Here it comes. I'm going to do this one more time, but this time I'm going to flip the snow from the passenger side toward the driver's side. One of the main advantages of a bee plow is the ability to control which way the wind rows go, as well as you have an increased carrying capacity. And now back to our regularly scheduled program. That's our neighbors. You can see they're using a big loader. And um, same pusher blade that we're using on a TLB. 12, 14 foot, that's really typical of what you're gonna see for a mid-size loader. And that is the same thing that a TLB can handle. TLB stands for tractor loader backhoe. And the reason I prefer tractor loader backhoes is for our company, they're more versatile. It gives us the ability to go out, dig an addition, put a pusher blade on it, do snow removal in the winter time, it's more of an all-season type of a machine for our specific needs. I mean, I've driven both, owned both, and I would buy a TLB any day over a payloader for put, using a 12 or a 14-foot snow pushing off. But we're not, we wouldn't put a 16-footer on a TLB. Slippery snow, slippery snow. It's cold snow, it's slippery. Nothing worse than sliding into a curve. Okay. Actually sliding into a car. Sliding into a car is worse than sliding into a room. Or, I had a guy hit a light pole. Yep, yep. Now, so one of the bad things about TLBs is that big boom arm on the back, and an inexperienced operator hooked right onto one of those telephone poles. All right, so we plow this. It wasn't here, this was years ago. Oh, here's a question some of you guys had. Why do all of your equipment have the IC sticker, Interstate Company's logo on it? Well, we actually sub all this out, which I actually prefer to do. I don't, I don't have to worry about invoicing or collecting or being the go-to person. So we plow all this, by the way. Um, I have one person that I deal with. He handles all of the different managers for all of these different accounts that we're doing this tour on. Uh, he coordinates everything. He coordinates the salt. He coordinates the, sh uh, the, the sidewalk crews. I coordinate the lot clearing uh, crew, so I take that off his plate. I actually do the best I can to get as, keep as much off from his plate as possible because uh, Ryan, I've worked with him for years. He's a good friend of mine now. Uh, he's a great guy. Interstate Company is a great company. Absolutely love working for these guys. All the years I've worked for, probably one of probably the best company I've worked for. Actually, it is the best company. So um, they slapped their stickers on my equipment, and you know what? It, I'm a, it's a proud partner as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so we're back plowing. We plow all this. Plow all this in here. 
So if you guys have a company that you uh, work with or plow with, sub out. So we plow all this. This is actually our snow stockpile site. So all of the snow gets hauled into here and dumped. We will literally fill this entire lot up before the year is over from hauling snow. Uh, so if you guys are considering being a subcontractor, be careful. Boy, there's some crappy contractors to work for. In fact, I've worked for more crappy ones than I've worked for good ones. Just dot your I's and cross your T's. Make sure your contracts are clear. Um, if you have payment terms, some words of wisdom. If the contractor gets behind on payments, then you need to start jumping up and down and screaming like a little kid because you there's a there's there's no excuse for it. More times than not, when a contractor gets behind on a payment and they're dealing with massive accounts like this, that means the company's in financial trouble. And that also means that you may not get paid at all. So don't let a contractor, if you're a sub, don't let a contractor come up with excuses why they can't pay you. That should be one of the first early signs that they're facing problems of their own, bigger problems. And you guys will be on the losing end of that. So anytime you don't get paid, they're gonna pay themselves first. They're gonna keep their own doors